Hello everybody, it's Wendy, and today we are going to make a necklace just like this one. Well, not just like it, but similar to it. So this is a three layer, and I've got glue on my pendant piece right there that I need to get off from my E6000 where I glued my bell on. But this is a um, three layer uh, necklace. If you can see, it comes together right here, finishes up at the top, has an extender on it. Um, and it's made with some pearls, some bicones, some really pretty chain. Um, and then we have done a peyote bail right here and a ring and these dangles from the ring. So um, Michelle sent me this and I thought it was so beautiful that I just wanted to use it as a, a pendant piece, as a focal piece on something. So yeah, I think it's really, really pretty. Um, so that's this necklace, and if you would like to learn to make this, we're going to make another one today, um, including the peyote strip. And I just realized that I got all my supplies out, and I didn't get the ring out to hang my pendant piece on, which is kind of important. <laughs> so let me pull one out here, something that I can use for that, that will be pretty. I'm not sure I like that one. Here's one. I like this one. Okay. All right. So I'm going to tell you all of the supplies you need to make this entire necklace. And then we will do um, the peyote. We'll start the peyote strip first. But I'll tell you everything you need. So you're going to need a focal. Okay. Now I love this. Lynn sent this to me. And I think these are so, so pretty. Um, if you can see, it's got like a blue, really iridescent, shiny, and please excuse the paint all over my hands. Um, I've been painting our deck out back, <laughs> and uh, I tried to get as much of it off as I could, but obviously I didn't get it all off. So, um, But yeah, we're going to use this pendant piece for the focal, and I'm not going to do any beads with it, just because I think it is so pretty in itself that I didn't really want to do anything hanging alongside it. Now this one... I thought it was so pretty in itself as well, but um, I just thought these beads went really well with it. Um, they were sparkly and pretty, but this one I think I'm just going to do by itself. Um, this is the ring that we're going to hang it from, and I'm going to do the peyote bail. So you're going to need a pendant piece or bead, focal bead, whatever you want to use, um, a ring to hang it from. You're going to need some delicas to do your peyote bell and I'm using these two colors here. I don't know what they are, but they're pretty. They look good together and I didn't have enough of just this one, so we're going to mix them. So, some delicas and those are 110 delicas. I don't know if you can use seed beads for the peyote or not. You may be able to use like some really even seed beads if you have some tohos or something like that, but I've never tried it with seed beads, so I don't know. And then you're going to need um I'm going to use this chain as my chain layer in the pen in the necklace so it'll go you know like this um, I'm going to use some tiger tail to string on the beads for the second layer and I'm going to use some Coriana chain to string on the bicones for the third layer so I'll have three layers of chain here okay um, I'm going to use these seed beads for one of the layers, and these are so, so pretty. They are silver rainbow electroplated, and they're 11 O's, and I have ordered some more of these, um, a big bunch of them. I'm going to actually put them up on my website, but oh my goodness, I love these. I think they're so pretty, um, but this is all I have of them right now, so when that order comes, I'm going to put some up on the website for sale because they're just beautiful. I want to share them. <laughs> want everybody to have some. And then um, I'm using these bicones. And these are like a emerald AB, I believe. They're really pretty too. Okay. You'll need a lobster clasp. You'll need two rings to hook all of your layers of your necklace onto. You'll need a ring for your lobster to hook to. And you'll need a jump ring to hook your lobster onto everything else with. And then you're going to need a piece of chain for an extender, and I'm just going to use a piece of this chain that I'm using in the necklace for my extender. You'll need a head pin to make your dangle at the end of your necklace. You'll need um, some crimp beads and some lobsters. Now, let me show you the kind of lobsters that I like for this, and it's this kind. 
I don't like this kind that have this little hooky thing because I don't feel like they're very secure. But this kind that have the closed loops are what I really like to use. So that's what we're going to be using in, in this. And so let me move those out of the way. You'll need some small jump rings. You will need all of your tools, your uh, round nose, chain nose, and cutters. And I believe that's everything. Um, you may want to have a, wire, a couple wire guards for your tiger tail strand just to make it more secure. Okay? So, um, and a stop bead. I've got a stop bead for my, what we're getting ready to do in the bead weaving. Okay, so move everything aside except for your delicas. All we're going to be using right now are the delicas. And I'm going to dump these both out. And we're just, I'm just going to pick them up in a random pattern. I'm not going to do anything like, you know, I'm just going to, I just want to incorporate both colors because I didn't think I had enough of this one color to do it. Okay, so let's put on our stop bead. So I've got my needle threaded onto about an arm span of um, smoke fire line. And I'm just going to put, I'm going to leave about, I don't know, just a little tail, just enough to weave in um, at the end of the project. And you, when you put a stop bead on, I just sew through it twice with my needle like this. And it just keeps your project, your other beads, from falling off. <laughs> because peyote is a little hard to get started. Okay. Now, um, when I first started bead weaving, I was terrified of peyote. I tried it, could not get it, and it took me a long time to master it, but once you get it, you see how easy it really is not hard at all. Um, and a lot of people, I think, find it easier than I did for some reason. I don't know why I found it so hard, but I really, really, really did find it hard. Um, now, my bane of my bead weaving is... Um, um, cubic right angle weave and I cannot get cubic right angle weave down to save my life I just can't do it so one day I hope I'll be able to master it but as of now I'm failing at it so anyway my point to saying that is if you find something hard just keep trying because like I said peyote I couldn't do in the beginning but now it's like pretty easy so all right so the number of beads that you pick up are going to be the width of your piece that you're doing. So I don't want this to be super wide because I don't want it to be bunched up on the edges. So I'm going to just pick up a number of beads here um, and see how wide I think I need to make it. And I'm not doing them in any real pattern. I'm just doing it. Okay, so that I believe is, is too wide. So I'm going to take off a couple there and then we'll look here. That looks about right, I think. So what do I have here? I've got two, four, six, eight, nine. But it really needs to be an even number, so I'm going to take one more off and we'll have eight. So two, four, six, eight. Okay. And I think that that will, will be just fine to go across my ring. Okay, so eight beads on there, and you can measure your own, you know, your ring, whatever you think it needs to be, but I think eight's going to be plenty for me. Okay, so now you have got your stop bead at the bottom, and that stop bead's why its hole is kind of big, that little delicate might go down in there. So you got your stop bead at the bottom, you're going to pick up a bead, a delica, okay? Now, you want to miss out this first bead, you just skip it, and you're going to go through the second bead facing down towards your tail, so if I can get my needle to go through the bead, I will show you just like this. So you skip out that first bead. You're going to go through your second bead facing down towards your tail and just hold it all together there with your fingers the best you can and pull. And it's going to sit weird at first, so just don't be alarmed. Okay, so what you want, and see mine's weird too, you just have to have to make it do what you want it to do. So what you want are your top two beads sitting side by side like this in this little T shape. Can you see that? They're just side by side in this little T shape. And I'm noticing that some of these delicas are a lot thinner. They're not exactly the same. So we'll see how this is going to work. Okay. Now you're coming out of this second bead here. Okay, you're going to pick up another one, pick up a Delica, you're going to skip, you're coming out of the second one, 
right there. You're going to skip that third one and go through the fourth one facing down towards your tail. Okay, just like this. And this gets much easier after you have a little bit to hold on to, too. It's kind of hard at first because there's not much to hang on to. Okay. And then when you pull, it's going to set it right beside. So you're going to have a T, a, a single bead, and a little T, and a, you're coming out of this single bead. Okay. So what you want to do is pick up another Delica. Skip. You're coming out of this little bead right here. Skip this next one and go through the next one down towards your beadwork. Okay? Just like that. Or towards your tail, I meant. And pull. And it should set it right side by side. And if it doesn't, just adjust it until it does. Okay? So here's what we've got. We've got a little T, a single, a T, a single, a T, a single, and a sing and the rest are singles. So we're coming out of this one right here. It's the third one up on our row, not counting our stop bead. We're coming out of it. We're going to pick up a bead, and we're going to skip the one below it. So we're coming out of this one, skip this next one, and go down through the last one. That'll be the last one on your row, and don't go through your stop bead, okay? Just go through the... The last little Delica there on your row if you have eight like I do. Okay. And now you've got this little stack <laughs> of T single, T single, T single, T single. Okay. Just like that. That's what you should have. Now you want to pull it tight. And I like to flip my work over because I like to work going up for some reason. I don't even know why. So we're going to make a turn, okay? So you're going to pick up a Delica. This on the turns is the only time that you don't skip a bead, okay? So you're coming out of this bottom bead right here. We're going to turn and go back up. So you're just going to pick up your Delica and go through the next bead. It's the first bead that's sticking out, okay? Right here, right above your bottom bead. And you're going to pull. And don't get your tail caught. And when you pull it, it's going to set it right beside the bottom bead where we were just coming out of. Okay? So now, like I said, this will get easier when we have more to hold on to. Okay, so here's the bottom row. We're coming out this one on the second row. You're going to pick up a bead. And you're going to go through the next one that's sticking out. Okay? So, as you can see, you're going to go through this one, okay, and pull. Okay, now, here's what we've got. It looks kind of wonky, but it'll straighten up here in a minute. Okay, so we're coming out. Of this bead right here we're gonna pick up a bead and we're gonna go through the next one sticking out okay just like this and pull and I keep pulling my work right off the table don't I there we go all right and it's gonna set him right in there so he's in line with all the rest of them so now we're coming out this bead right here we are going to pick up a bead, and we're going to go through the next bead sticking out, which is the bead in our top row. Come on, camera. <laughs> determined to, right there, just like that. Okay. And there's what we've got. So now, I'm going to flip my work over, because I like to work top up, or bottom up, for some reason. I don't know why that is, but I do. So we're coming out this bead right here. This one right here. Okay. So you're going to pick up a bead. And you're going to go, you're not skipping one this time. You're just going through the first one sticking out right here. Okay. 
just like this. Pull it up. Okay. And here's what you should have. Pick up a bead. Go through the next one sticking out. So you're coming out of this one. See this next one sticking out? You're going to go right through there. Just like that. For those of you who know peyote, I'm sorry, this is maybe tedious for you, but I'm trying to do this um, slow and simple for the people that don't know it because it's hard in the beginning when you're learning. Okay, so you're coming out of this bead right here. You're going to pick up your bead and you're just going to go through the next one that's sticking out right there. And pull. Okay, so you're coming out of this bead, you're going to pick up a bead, and go through the next one sticking out, which should be the top one on your, your piece there, right there. Don't go through your stop bead. <laughs> and just pull it tight, pull it through, and here's what we've got. And now we're starting to get a little something to hang on to. So flip will work. Okay. We're coming out of this bottom bead right here. You're just going to pick up a bead and go through the first one sticking out. So this is our turn. We're just going to go through the first one sticking out. And it sets it right in there. Okay. Pick up a bead. Here's where we're coming out. We're going to go through the next one sticking out right here. Okay, just like that. Pick up a bead. We're coming out right here. Just go through your next one sticking out. Okay, pick up a bead. Here's where we're coming out. Go through the next one sticking out, which will be the top one on your row. Okay, and here's what we've got. Flip it. I'll do one more row of this with you and then I'll let you go finish it. Finish the rows of peyote. So pick up a bead. We're coming out the bottom bead here. Go through the first bead sticking out. See, sets it right in there. Pick up a bead. We're coming out right here. Go through the next bead, sticking out. Okay, pick up a bead. Coming out right here. Go through the next one, sticking out. And we're at the top of our row again, so pick up a bead, go through the top one here, but don't go through your stop bead, okay, and pull. Okay, I'm going to flip my work. Now, just continue doing your peyote until you get the length that you desire, which for me, I believe is going to be about 20 rows. So right now, the way I count the rows are just one, two, three, four. So I need to do 16 more rows. So go ahead and do the rows, um, do 16 more rows, and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so I've got my 20 rows here and I've actually removed my stop bead. So just go ahead and pull your stop bead off. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do something called zipping up the peyote strip. And if you look, when you bend your little strip around, it should fit right in together like the ones that stick out should fit in the indentions here okay so we're going to do what's called zipping it up so we need to put our ring in here because once we close this up there won't be a way to get our ring in okay so what you're going to do is you're going to take um your strip and your your needle your thread is coming out of this last one here 
you're just going to go straight across and sew in this first one on the other side. Okay? Just like this. Okay? Just like that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your string. This is a way to figure it out. Go straight across. Just lay your string straight across. So you need to go into this bead. Okay? If you lay your string straight across there, like you don't want your string going diagonal, so lay it straight across and go in the bead directly under it. Okay. Then you're going to come over here and zip into this one where your string is straight across right there. You're going to go right in this one. Okay. Then, if you put your string straight across, you're right on the other side. You're going to go right over. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. Yeah, you're going to go right over into this one. Okay? And you're just zigzagging back and forth is all you're doing. And it's sewing the two rows together. So the ones that stick out go into the indentions on the other side, and it's just, it's called zipping it up. And you're just doing that all the way down through here. So see, this one is the next one I need to go through. Okay. And again, if you lay your string across here, you can see you need to go into this one right here. And just don't get stuck on your work. But if you can see, it's zipping it up completely. You can't even tell where the line was. So here's where we're at. We're coming out of this bead right here. So we need to go through this one right here. Across from it. Okay. And we're right here. Pull your string up. You can see you need to go right into this one. Okay, and now, if you can see, you've zipped it all the way up, and your string is coming out right across from the bead where your tail is. So just ignore your tail, go down through that bead, okay, just like this. And you've zipped it completely up now, so you can't even tell where the line was that we had. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew down through here a little bit and secure my thread. So if you look, you can go on the diagonal like this. You don't want to do anything to cross a thread path. But if you go on the diagonal, you won't be able to see the thread. And I just go down through a few beads and pull it tight. Okay. And then I'm going to go straight across here. Go back up through here. Down through here. And I'm going to go down a couple diagonally again. And all I'm doing is weaving the thread in and out of the beads. And once it's woven in and out of the beads really well, it won't pull loose. And we're, do, we're going to do the same thing with the tail. Okay, so I'm coming out of this bead. I'm just going to go straight across here, follow the thread path, and go down on the diagonal two or three of these. See, just like this. Pull it through. Okay. And then I'm just going to go back over here, go up one bead, back across here and down this bead, Back over here, up through this bead. And now you've made a complete circle. And so just go down through a couple more and you should be ready 
to cut this thread. Okay, so let's cut the thread. Now, what we've got to do is we have to weave our tail thread in that same way. So, we're going to just thread the needle with our tail thread. Hopefully I can do this. Sometimes it's hard to thread these needles when you've pulled thread out of them. It gets that waxy coating in the eye, but that one did perfect. Okay, so our tail is coming out here. So I'm just going to go down the next bead. Okay. I'm going to go straight across and up through the bead beside it. Then I'm going to go down on the diagonal through a couple here, just as many as I can get through, which looks like it's going to be about three. And you may have to use your pliers to pull it. You can pull through, just don't break your delicas. And then I'm going to go straight across and back up through this one. I'll go straight across and back down through this one. Go through a couple of them if I can. Oh, sorry, hit the camera. And my needle came off, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut my thread because I think it's pretty good. All right, so here's what we've got. We've got our little bell, our Delica bell, peyote bell on our ring. Okay? So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this chain right here that I'm going to, it already has a lobster attached to it. This is going to be my chain layer and I'm just going to put it through here just to get an idea of where it's going to go. And I'm going to go ahead and attach this um, pendant. Now I need a ring big enough unless I do it on this small part over here. But I, you want to make sure you have a ring big enough to you know, make it hang right, hang well enough to hang right. So let me grab my jump rings here and dump some out so I can see if I can find one. Um, I'm not sure if that one will be too big or not. And another thing you have to figure out is that will make it hang right. Okay, so let me see if I can, if this jump ring will fit. Let's put the pendant on. Yep, it looks like it'll fit. Okay, so there's what we have so far. Very pretty. Now, I want to do a layer of these bicones, a strand of these bicones, and I'm going to do this on this Coriana chain. So I'm just going to go ahead and feed on. These bicones, they're all exactly the same, so there's no like color variation or anything. So I told you I was painting our deck. We added on to our deck. Um, the mosquitoes here in North Carolina are like vicious little creatures. And I was never really allergic to mosquitoes back in West Virginia. I mean, if they bit me, of course it itched and they made the the whelps or whatever, but here, I'm going to have to trim that. It's like a billion times worse. I don't know. When they bite me here, it's like I get these big sores, and it's horrible. So, um, we have this swampy area beside our house, and I think it makes the mosquitoes worse. And last year, we did not go outside without, like, bathing in citronella. I mean, it was horrible horrible. They would swarm you <laughs> the minute you went outside. So I'm having trouble with this chain. So we decided that we were going to get a gazebo, one of those gazebos that has mosquito netting around it, and put it on our back deck. But our back deck was not big enough for a gazebo. So we had to extend our back deck out by about four feet. And so we did that, and now it's big enough for the gazebo. So um, I had to paint it today, though. We repainted, of course, because you've got the old wood and the new wood. You have to paint it all the same or it's going to look weird. So I was out there today. We painted, of course, the rails were already white, so we just repainted them white, and the floor was like 
a gray color that matches our house, but we went just a tad bit lighter, and it's like a light blue now. You can see it on my finger here. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it's pretty, but I'll be so glad to get that done, that gazebo set up, and then we were under like well, do we get a gazebo? Do we not get a gazebo? Because we have hurricanes here. But I told Chris, I think if we bolt the thing down, there's places where you can bolt it down. And then he read somewhere that you can fill the, um, the posts with pea gravel inside and that will make them like sturdier. So we're going to get some pea gravel. We're going to fill the posts with pea gravel. We're going to bolt the thing down to the deck. And then if a storm comes... We'll just have to go out and maybe take the um, canvas, the top off, because it is like a, a fabric top, but it comes off pretty easily, I think. So I think if we just take the top off, um, if a hurricane comes, then it won't like lift off, hopefully. <laughs> it won't go flying. <laughs> but we really have to do something here because the mosquitoes are so terrible. We had last year bug spray by every single door of our house. We went out, you sprayed yourself down, or you were sorry you didn't. <laughs> All bugs are bigger here in North Carolina. That's what I've found so far, including mosquitoes and spiders. Okay, so I am just putting these bicones on here. They're really pretty too. I'm not going to do the entire strand. I want some of the Coriana chain to show on the edges, on the ends, but I do want to get, you know, quite a few on here of the bicones. I'm getting ready to do a new craft room tour because I reorganized everything again. <laughs> it's constantly ever-changing situation in here. I get organized and think, oh, I like this. And then I'm like, eh, this isn't working. So I change it. But I really made some big changes this time. So um, I'm getting ready to do the update a video of that. And... There's still a few gemstone kits available on the website if anybody's interested in those. There's the turquoise one, which I was really surprised. I thought it would go fast, and it didn't. It's still up there. Um, and then there's a pink one, I think. And I'm not sure what other one. I think there were three left. Um, but I'll have more Coriana chain on the site soon. I ordered it. And it's been forever. Um, it's actually been 20 days since it shipped. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been watching and hopefully it will be here soon because I know everybody's been kind of waiting on it. Okay, so there's, let's see, I'm going to do a few more. I want a few more than that. I was letting the deck, the paint dry. I'm going to have to go out and finish, do another coat on there, on the floor part of it anyway. And then I think I'm going to do our front porch. Our front por porch is a deck too. It's like a wooden um, front porch and it's painted the same gray. And I think I might do the floor of it as well. Everything looks so much cleaner and nicer with a fresh coat of paint on it. <laughs> Okay, so let's see how many bicones, how, how this looks. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and feed it through my peyote strip here, my peyote bale. And we'll see. So here's what we've got so far, and I may just throw on just a few more of the bicones, and then maybe four or five more, and then that'll be enough. I love 
love the color of these. They're so pretty. Okay. So there's four more. So that, that should be plenty. Because I do want the chain to show too. Alright, so now I'm going to string on the seed beads on my tiger tail. And in order to do that, I'm going to put a bead stopper on one end. And I'm going to string these seed beads all the way. They're going to go all the way up to the top. So just take your tiger tail, start stringing on your seed beads, and I will pause the video because you guys don't need to watch me do that. That'll be really boring. So just take your tiger tail and start stringing on your seed beads. Okay, so I've got my seed beads strung on here. The length that I think that I want um, my necklace to be. I may string a couple more on um, just when we get it set up here and see how it goes. So... But I'm not sure. So let me move some of these beads out of the way. Get that stop bead back in the bead soup. And just get these things out of the way so they're not... Okay. So here's what we've got. We've got our chain layer. Which I want to go on the inside. I'm going to just ar arrange these the way I want them to go. Then I've got my Coriana layer with my um, bicones. And here is my seed bead layer. With a little stop bead thing up there. Okay, so I want to kind of try to hold this up. I know you are not going to be able to see this on camera, and I'm sorry, but I want to try to kind of hold it up and just see if it's as long as I want it to be, if the seed bead layer is as long as I want it to be, because I may need to add a few more to it. Let me hold it up and see here. And I'm glad I had the bead bug on there because the first thing I did was drop the, <laughs> the layer that has the seed beads on it. That would have gone everywhere. Um, let's see. I think I think I am gonna add just a few more seed beads on here. I just I don't want it to be real long, but I want it to be long enough to where you know I don't want it to be too short. And I am gonna put an extender on it so it'll be adjustable, but. I want the seed beads to go all the way to the end. I don't want any of the tiger tail showing, so that's why I'm going to add just a few more on, just to have enough to, okay. All right, so now what we need to do is I've got enough on my seed bead layers here. I'm going to go ahead and get my lobster claw, or my um, clamshell and my crimps out, and I'm going to crimp both ends of the seed bead layer first. Um, just because I want to make sure that they don't go flying off everywhere. All right, so I think I have enough on there now. Okay, so get your clamshells and your crimps out. Let me do that real quick. And you guys know that I always glue. <laughs> Everybody makes fun of me for that, but um, I just feel like it's way more secure if you do it. You don't have to do it. It's totally optional, but I always glue... Um, my clamshells. So I'm going to grab my E6000 here because I'm not changing it up. <laughs> I'm still going to glue them. And if I could get the toothpick out, the toothpick is stuck to the. Let me just grab another one. Okay, so I've got my E6000 here. It is dried up in the tube to clean that out. All right, there we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tiger tail, I'm going to take the end of it here, and I'm going to put a clamshell on. I thought I got a few of those out, did I not? I guess I didn't. Okay. So I'm going to put the clamshell on, tiger tail right through the clamshell, and then I'm going to put my crimp on. Okay, now this doesn't have to be pretty because your um, clamshell is going to cover it, so I'm just going to crimp this down up at the top really tightly. I'm going to slide my clamshell up. going to put a little dab of E6000 in there. And I'm going to close it up with my pliers. And it does not matter if some of the glue is squishing out the side, just, you know, wipe it off. It's going to be fine. Okay, so there's one end. 
Now I need to do the same thing to the other end. So I'm going to move all these seed beads up. There we go. Take my bead bug off. Those bead bugs have saved me so many times <laughs> from losing all my whole row of seed beads. Put the clamshell on. Put the crimp on. Now I need to move this all the way down. Because you don't want your tiger tail showing. It's not really pretty like the Corianna is. Unless you have colored tiger tail. And they do make that now. And I'm going to go ahead on in here with my pliers and I'm crimp that little crimp really tightly. Okay. Now I can cut that off. Okay. And I'm going to take a little more glue, put it inside this one. And close it up. So there's my seed bead layer. It's ready to be attached at the top. So now what I have to do are make my other layers the same length as it. So this one has got a lobster on it that I don't want on there because I'm going to use a different lobster. I, I like to use a little bit bigger one. I don't like these tiny tiny ones. So let's take that off. I don't even know where my lobster went that I was going to use with this. I had one laying out. Okay. So we're going to make our chain even with our um, seed bead layer. I'm going to go ahead and start putting it on my ring here. So let's open the ring up. I want my chain layer, I think, on the inside. Yeah, I probably need to go ahead and and crimp this. Now I want some of this chain showing on the bicone layer. So I'm going to take my lobster and find another one. Or my clamshell. I always call those lobsters. I'm going to go ahead and insert my Coriana. And I'm going to go ahead and crimp the end of this one. This one side. Okay, so let's get that crimp bead on there. There we go. <laughs> did I drop it off or did it go down on there? I think I dropped it off. Yep, sure did. So we'll put it on again. Slippery little thing. All right. Get on there. There we go. Okay, so I've got the crimp on there. I'm going to go ahead and crimp it down with my plier. Nice and tight. Then I'm going to put a little glue in here. And I'm going to close this up. Okay, now I've got my ring here. Let's get all this down. I want my chain layer on the inside. Then I want my bicone layer. Then I want my seed bead layer. So I'm going to put my chain layer on first. Then I'm going to put my bicone layer on this side. And then my seed bead layer on. Just like this. Now, let me see. I may hook, maybe I should hook those on with a jump ring. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how they lay. I'm going to close that up for now. And I'm going to grab the other end of everything here. All right, this is where it's kind of tricky because you really have to make sure. How did I get? Oh, there we go. Okay. You really have to make sure that you keep these laying just right. So see, my chain layer needs to be on top, just like this, then my bicone layer, and then my seed bead layer. 
but I don't want them to be, um, I want them to lay right. I don't want them to be too tight or too loose. So I'm going to stretch my whole necklace out here like this. You want to stretch this out to where it's fully extended. And each layer is laying just like you want it to be. So put your chain layer on the top. Make sure your bicone layer is in the middle, which mine's not. They're trying to... There we go. Chain layer on the top. Bicone layer in the middle. I'm sorry, I hit the camera. And then your seed bead layer. Okay. Now, what you have to do is you have to hold this straight and you have to get your seed bead layer stretched out because that is the one that your others have to measure to. Okay, so then you take your middle layer, you got your seed bead layer laid out here straight. You take your bicone layer and you're going to cut your Coriana chain right even. I'm trying to make sure I'm on camera here, barely. Okay, so cut your Coriana chain, hold this taut on the other end. And you're going to cut your Coriona chain right here so that it will, when you put your clamshell on, it's going to be even. Okay, so go right about here. All right. And then we need to put our clam and our crimp on. And you want to do that now because you don't want all these bicones to fall off, <laughs> which is what will happen if... If I don't put it on right now, so let me find a clam shell. Here's a clam. So we're going to stick that right through there. Okay, and we're going to get our crimp and crimp it. That's the trick with multi-layer necklaces is just getting them to lay just right and everybody the same length that you want them to be and, and all that. All right, so I'm gonna crimp that down. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and put some glue in there. And close this one up. Okay, now, now at least our bicones won't be falling off, which is what I was worried was gonna happen. Okay, stretching it out still. I need to get my other ring here. And I need to make sure that my chain layer is stretched out as well as even with the others. And then I'm going to cut the chain probably right here to put the ring and everybody should be pretty well even here. Okay. Okay. Now, we want the chain layer on the outside, on the top. Oh, that little piece of link stuck on there. Let me get that off. Okay. So we want the chain layer first. Our bicone layer goes in the middle, and our seed bead layer goes on the outside. Okay, close it up. All right, now when we hold this up, let me get it together and I'll show you all. Here's what it looks like. Ooh, it's really pretty. <laughs> it is really pretty. Those bicones are just so sparkly and pretty. Wow. Okay, so here's what we have on the top. Just make sure you keep it to where it lays right. The chain should be on the, let's see, I want the chain, yeah, the chain goes on the inside. Let me pick this up and, and they may get just a little bit twisted up in there. It's okay if they do, but I just want to kind of keep it like that while I'm putting my ends on. Okay, so now we're going to put our lobster on. Here's my lobster. And I'm going to use a piece of this uh, Figaro chain for the extender. I need to make sure, you always want to make sure this lobster will go in there. It'll go in those big links, but you know what? It's not going to go in the small links. Will the smaller lobster here that I just took off of there? It should, because it came on the Figaro chain. Will it go in the small links? Wow, it, 
Well, it kind of does, but not really. Okay, I'm going to get a different kind of chain. I've got a bigger chain here that I know will work. And I'll just use it. Okay, that chain has big links. <laughs> So I know it's going to work. So I'm just going to open this jump ring. I'm going to put this extender on, close the jump ring, and I will go back at the end and make sure that all these jump rings are really closed. I always do that when I'm finished making the jewelry. I double check all of it. Um, and then I'm going to put this lobster on. And you know what? I'm looking at that lobster and it does look huge. Maybe I should use the small one. I think I will. <laughs> and I'm just going to put it on with a smaller jump ring. like this okay and now I can clasp my necklace oops and it's perfect it is really pretty. I love these colors together. My goodness, they're beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to make my dangle for my um, extender. I always put dangles on the end of them. I just think it makes them so much cuter. So I'm just going to take a head pin and use a couple of these bicones. And if I can get the seed beads on there, I may have to get a thinner head pin. Yeah, I'm going to have to. Let me get, grab a thinner head pin real quick. Okay, here's one. So we'll do bicones couple seed beads, about three, and then one more bicone. And we'll just make a little bead dangle. Okay, so I'm just going to bend it over. Give it a cut. And roll this loop back. Make sure it's closed all the way. Okay, and then I'm just going to put it on the end of my chain here. Close this up real good. And there you have your little dangle on the end. It just gives it such a nice little touch. So here is our necklace. Here's the ends. The way that it comes together on the ends. And then you go down through here. And oh, it's just gorgeous. The peyote bail. And I love this thing so much. Oh, I can't even tell you. It's so pretty. So yeah, I think this turned out pretty good. There's the one. And here is the other one that I've already done before. So I think these make really pretty different little necklaces. The peyote bells are just really pretty and look so intricate and really you haven't done much. They're not hard. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And if you ring the bell, if you push the little bell, it will tell you every time I upload a video. Um, I still have some gemstone lots available on my website. I'll put the link in the description box below if you'd like to pick up one of those. And um, like I said, Coriana chain is on the way. Who knows when it's going to come? I've been waiting for it forever, but it'll get here eventually. Um, and when it does, it'll be up on the website as well. And I've been uploading tons of new items. I'm getting ready. I know I've had a couple people ask me, um, where are the resin seashell pendants that I made? Um, they're wanting those up on the website. And so I will be uploading those in the next couple of days. It's just the pendant piece and then you beat it yourself. Um, but a lot of people were asking about those resin seashell pendants. So they'll be up on the site in the next couple of days. And, um, yeah, so check those out. And again, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you <laughs> like the necklace and get inspired to try to make one. And um, yeah, so I'm going to go check the state of the paint on this deck because I think it needs another coat. And it's probably dry enough for me to do it. So I'm going to go check that out and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!